good morning today's topic of discussion is pharmacotherapeutics in pregnancy that is the effect of drugs in pregnancy and we will be dealing with two sets of drugs that is oxytocin and antihypertensives so at the end of today's class you should be able to describe the mechanism of action indications contraindications their therapeutic uses and side effects of oxytocin and antihypertensives so what is pharmacotherapeutics this is a branch of pharmacology which is defined as study of the therapeutic uses and effects of drugs so today's drugs are oxytocin and antihypertensives let us start with oxytocin these are the drugs of varying chemical nature that have the power to stimulate the contractions of uterine muscles so they are also called uterotonics that is they increase the tonicity of the uterus so the introduction of oxytocin drugs for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage has been regarded as one of the enduring achievements of modern science so because of that so many maternal mortalities have been prevented so it's used for prevention as well as the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage so with the various drugs include oxytocin ergot derivatives prostaglandins like pge1 pge2 pgf2 alpha and then there are certain miscellaneous drugs which also have got a eutrotonic effects the quinine emetine alcohol and ethylgradine so they have got limited action and they are not being used for this purpose so oxytocin is one of the important drugs in this category it is synthesized in the supra optic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus and the secretion occurs by sensory stimulation from the cervix vagina and from suckling at the breast that is where the oxytocin receptors are in plenty so oxytocin has a half life of 3 to 4 minutes and duration of action of approximately 20 minutes the mode of action is by receptor and voltage mediated calcium channels and amniotic and prostaglandin residual production also occurs so secretion of oxytocin it is by from the hypothalamus as we have discussed earlier then that goes to the posterior pituitary and from there it goes to the various parts of the body and the effect of the uterus is in form uterine contraction and the effect on the breast that is on the myoepithelial cells uh, it causes milk ejection so on uterus oxytocin acts through some g protein coupled receptors and the calcium second messenger system to contract uterine muscle which is a smooth muscle oxytocin also stimulates the release of prostaglandins and leukotrienes that in turn also augment uterine contraction if used in small doses it increases both the frequency and the force of uterine contractions at higher doses too it produces sustained contraction so contractions uh, caused by oxytocin they resemble the normal physiological contractions of the uterus that is the contractions followed by relaxation and uterine contraction generally begin at the top of the uterine fundus and spread down towards the cervix and it doesn't affect the cervix and the lower uterine segment so when the your uh, pregnancy is away from term the, then it is resistant to oxytocin and the at term the oxytocin contracts the uterine smooth muscles so contracts uh, this thing uh, sensitivity to oxytocin increases eight fold in the last 9 weeks of pregnancy and 30 times in early labor the mechanism of action the interaction of androgenous or administered oxytocin with myometrial cell membrane receptor promotes the influx of the calcium ions from extracellular fluid and from sarcoplasmic reticulum 
into the cell this increase in cytoplasmic calcium stimulates uterine contraction so in this figure this is the relaxed muscle where there is a intracellular calcium is low and when the intracellular calcium is released into the cell then the uh, smooth muscle contraction occurs here also the same thing has been shown in actin and myosin components of the smooth muscles so what are the effects in the breast and the kidneys on the breast oxytocin also causes contraction of myoepithelial cells surrounding the mammary alveoli which leads to milk ejection and oxytocin is also used in cases of breast engorgement due to the same action on kidneys at high concentration oxytocin has weak antidiuretic and pressure activity due to activation of vasopressin receptors so what is the absorption metabolism and excretion of oxytocin oxytocin is not effective orally and when administered intravenously and as a nasal spray it can also be administered in intra by intramuscular route it oxytocin is not bound to plasma proteins it is catabolized by liver and kidneys half life is from 3 to 5 minutes duration of action like we have discussed earlier is 20 minutes and it is supposed to be stored at 2 to 8 degree centigrade in the refrigerator otherwise the its potency goes away and not to be stored in the freezer of the refrigerator the refrigerator preparations used synthetic oxytocin is mostly used then there is a a uh, preparation called as centometrin which is a combination of synthetic oxygen oxytocin and ergometrin an alpha adrenergic dopaminergic and serotonin receptor agonist both the substances that is the oxytocin as well as ergometrin they cause the uterus to contract and used during and immediately after the delivery of a baby uh, that is to prevent the pph This amino oxytocin is another preparation it is a synthetic analog of oxytocin and has similar activities as oxytocin but is more potent and has a longer half life in comparison unlike oxytocin which is given by intravenous injection usually this is administered as a buccal tablet formulation however i think it is not available in our country then there is oxytocin nasal solution which is also rarely used effectiveness of oxytocin so in the first trimester the uterus is almost refractory to oxytocin in the second trimester relative refractoriness persists that means the refractoriness reduces to some extent then oxytocin can only supplement other abortifacient agents in the induction of abortion uh, the effect is much more during the second trimester as compared to the first trimester and in later months and during labor uterus is highly sensitive to oxytocin even in small doses in the indications of use of oxytocin it can be therapeutic and to some extent diagnostic in therapeutic in pregnancy in early pregnancy it can be used to accelerate abortion to stop bleeding following evacuation of the uterus either uh, spontaneous or induced and it is used as an adjunct of abortion along with other abortifacient agents the therapeutic late effects of the pregnancy will come to in the next slide so during labor uh, it uh, causes induction it can be used as induction of labor or augmentation of labor uh, induction of labor uh, sorry an uh, augmentation of labor uh, like uh, in cases of uterine inertia and induction there are several indication of induction of labor which we had discussed in an earlier class and uh, so many obstetric indication as well as the medical indications are there for which this can be used as uh, as one of the drugs then it can be used in the active management of the third stage of labor and following expulsion of the placenta in perperium it is used to minimize the blood loss and to control the postpartum hemorrhage mainly the Uh, atonic postpartum hemorrhage and it can be used also in impaired milk ejection 
Usually it is given as a nasal spray, one puff in each nostril, two to three minutes after nurse, uh, the thing before nursing. And in cases of breast engorgement, uh, five units of oxytocin can be given intramuscularly and half an hour after administration of oxytocin, mother is told to express the breast, uh, the, then the milk usually comes out and that is how the breast engorgement reduces. The diagnostic indication of oxytocin is in form of contraction stress test. The stress test is based on the determination of respiratory function of the fetoplacental unit during induced contraction. This the details of which we will be coming to later. So what are the adverse effects of oxytocin? It can be maternal adverse effect as well as the fetal adverse effects. Uh, it may cause uterine hyperstimulation, especially if it is in higher doses or it has been continued for a quite a long time. Rarely uterine rupture can result. They usually it's seen in the, mainly in the scarred uterus. Then water intoxication is one of the side effects of uh, oxytocin. So whenever the oxytocin is infused at doses of 20 milli units per minute or more, renal free clearance decreases markedly. So if aqueous fluids are infused in appreciable amounts along with oxytocin, water intoxication can lead to convulsions, coma and even death. Though this is rare but it can happen if it has been used for a prolonged period and it is a diluted solution which has been used. Uh, oxytocin can also cause hypertension especially if it is used as a bolus dose and antidiuresis is one of the side effects of oxytocin. Fetal adverse effects include fetal distress, fetal hypoxia, neonatal jaundice and ultimately it can also lead to fetal death. So methods of administration of oxytocin though we have discussed earlier we would like to repeat again. One is a controlled intravenous administration. It is, uh, should be ideally administered by infusion pump and fluid load should be minimum. Otherwise, as we have discussed in the last slide, it can cause water intoxication and preferably should be started at a lower dose rate and increase gradually. That's why it is a controlled intravenous administration. Another route which can be used intramuscular route though not routinely used and another route is nas through nasal puffs. So in most instances, pre-induction cervical ripening and labor induction are simply a continuum. So when we were dealing with induction of uh, labor, we discussed about the Bishop's scope. So the first step in that one is the ripening of the cervix. That is the cervix from the low Bishop's score has to become a higher Bishop's score so that the in labor can be induced. So this drug uh, can be used for uh, this ripening as well as the induction of labor. However, there are much better drugs for this purpose. So thus, if, since it's a continuous process, this ripening of the cervix will also stimulate the labor. This uh, oxytocin may be used for labor induction as well as for augmentation and usually it is supposed to be used by infusion pump. So the goal of induction is to affect uterine activity sufficient to produce cervical change and fetal descent while avoiding development of a non-reassuring fetal status. So the, the dosage of oxytocin should be maintained like that. And oxytocin should be discontinued if the number of contractions persist with a frequency of more than 5 in a 10 minute period or more than 7 in a 15 minute period with a persisting, especially with a persisting non-reassuring fetal heart rate pattern. So oxytocin discontinuation then rapidly decreases the contraction frequency. And depending upon the effect of that, the further management can be decided upon. The response to oxytocin is highly variable from one woman to the other and depends upon pre-existing uterine activity, cervical status, pregnancy duration and individual biological differences. 
so that we cannot say uh, this thing that all, this much dosage of to be in, in, uh, given to a particular patient the treatment and the dosage frequency should be individualized that's why whenever the oxytocin is being administered as an infusion a person has to monitor the patient continuously she cannot be left alone so usually a 1 ml ampule contains 5 units and it is usually diluted in a 500 ml of a crystalloid solution that is ringer lactate or monosaline and administered by infusion pump so this mixture uh, that is if you dilute 1 uh, 5 units in a 500 ml solution makes an oxytocin concentration of 10 ml units per ml so oxytocin is generally very successful when used to stimulate the labor and so to avoid bolus administration the infusion should be inserted into the main iv line close to the vena punctu site so principles of induction of labor it should be started with a low dose and escalated at an interval of 20 to 40 minutes usually an average it is 30 minutes Uh, when there is no response that is you escalate at every 30 minute interval if there is no response and when the optimal response is reached that is three contractions in 10 minutes sustaining for about 45 seconds so at that particular concentration it has to be uh, continued at the same uh, drip rate so to maintain the normal pattern of the uterine activity So the objective of oxytocin administration is to initiate effective uterine contractions and also once that peak is reached to maintain the normal pattern of uterine activity and the oxytocin infusion is supposed to continue after delivery for about 30 to 60 minutes. So the various regimens are there how to give oxytocin infusion. so it not at every place an infusion pump will be available we can use another method that is by the drops per minute so normally 1 ml contains 15 to 20 drops uh, depending upon the size of the drops but an average taken is 16 over here and then there is various low dose regimen and the high dose regimen can be used uh, in like uh, like we had discussed 5 uh, units in 500 ml so that makes 10 units per that means 16 drops is equal to 10 units and we usually start with 8 drops per minute so that becomes 5 milli units per uh, minute so here if we are reducing it to 2 units then it becomes like 4 units this uh, thing 4 milli units in 1 ml and so that is 2 milli units in by in 8 drops so once it is started in the low dose regimen it is started as 2 milli units per minute and increased at a rate of 2 milli units every 30 minutes so if if there is no response at half an hour to increase it to uh, 16 drops per minute that becomes 4 units increase after uh, 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 the half an hour increase by more, much more then it becomes 8 units So in the high dose regimen, we start with a five units and five hundred ml. Then initially, again, it is like eight drops per minute, and after half an hour, it is a, a doubled. Then it becomes sixteen drops or ten units per minute. So there are benefits and uh, the thing uh, disadvantages of using either regimen, but it has been seen that there are benefits favor high dose regimens compared with the low dose regimen. with either regimen these dosages are employed for either induction labor induction or augmentation but it has been seen that the higher dose regimens are the much more favorable response however the uterine hyperstimulation is also much more and then the intervals to increase oxytocin vary from 15 to 60 minutes though the average is half an hour so women uh, they have conducted some studies and then women assigned to the 20 minutes interval regimen for labor augmentation usually have a significantly reduced cesarean section rate for dysplasia compared with that of the 40 minutes interval regimen or again the disadvantage is that the chances of uterine tachycystoses 
and uterine hyperstimulation is much more if you use a 20 minutes escalation regimen as compared to the 40 minutes escalation escalation regimen so maximum dosage maximal effective dose of oxytocin to achieve adequate uterine contraction varies from one woman to the other if the contractions are not adequate and if the fetal status is reassuring and labor is assisted, uh, arrested and oxytocin infusion dose greater than 48 milli units also has no apparent risks the however it has been seen that the likelihood of progression to vaginal delivery decreases at and beyond an oxytocin dosage of 36 milli units per minute but still it has at a dosage of 72 milli units per minute which is a very high dose half of the nilipara that is primary gravidas deliver vaginally so one has to weigh pros and cons and then decide whether to continue oxytocin augmentation or not so in the however, in majority of cases a dose of less than 16 milli units per minute that is 2 units in 500 milliliter of crystalloid solution with the drop rate of 60 per minute is enough to achieve the objective. However, the conditions where the fluid overload is to be avoided, infusion with high concentration and reduced drop is preferred. Otherwise, like we discussed earlier, watery intoxication can be there. So for augmentation, uh, usually it is used in cases of uterine inertia and sometimes uh, act, uh, active management of uh, labor and that one the procedure usually consists of the low rupture of membranes followed by oxytocin infusion if the liquor is clear and however before this we took fetal pelvic disproportion or cephalicoid pelvic disproportion must be ruled out so when you we were discussing the indication there was a diagnostic indication of the contraction stress stress also called as oxytocin challenge test though it is not being used nowadays. The candidates suitable for this test include intrauterine growth restriction, post-maturity, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy and diabetes. Contraindications include compromised fetus, previous history of caesarean section or myomectomy, complications likely to produce preterm labor, and antipartum hemorrhage. So interpretation of contraction stress test as the positive interpretation means persistent late deceleration of fetal heart rate following 50% or more uterine contraction. So positive uh, contraction stress test is associated with increased incid incidence of intrauterine death fetal distress and low upguard scores but there is a 50% chance of false positive result and as such positive test cases are subjected to other methods of evaluation uh, like uh, biophysical profile and Doppler study nowadays for the well-being of the fetus so that's why nowadays this test is usually not done. So another interpretation negative means if there is no late deceleration or significant variable deceleration. That means a negative test means that it is associated with good fetal outcome. So this test was earlier being used to determine whether the, the, in, uh, the woman is fit to undergo a vaginal delivery. So another interpretation is like suspicious in that that is inconsistent but definite decelerations do not persist with more uterine contractions. Unsatisfactory, poor quality of recording or adequate uterine contraction is not achieved then this becomes an unsatisfactory test. Then there can be hyperstimulation that is either uterus can there will be hypertonus of the uterus uh, or which is associated with uh, non, uh, the tracing may not be proper and then there can be deceleration of fetal heart rate with uterine contraction lasting for more than 90 seconds or occurring more frequently than every 20 minutes. This is the, the hyperstimulation. 
So here uh, we complete the description about the oxytocin and uh, this thing the next uh, this thing episode we will be dealing with other oxytocins and antihypertensive drugs.